Hey, uh, I'm uh, Chris Baker. I've been coming to Good News for about nine years now. Hi, my name is Sue Rosignol. My name's Dustin Counts. Um, I've come to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. On June 10th, 2021, I decided to give my life to Jesus. And that was the first day in all that time that I didn't want to die. And I haven't wanted to die since. When I was a kid, I never knew much about church. Church was never a part of my upbringing. I don't believe I've been to church prior to coming to Good News more than five times in my entire life. I grew up going to church. I was in a Protestant ministry with my parents when I was a kid. Um, big stone building, typical church, pews. I thought church was an obligatory action, something I had to do. I thought church was a building and that it was filled with old rules. I thought church was a building that really well put together families went to. Even though I had been exposed to the Bible early on, I don't remember understanding it. I didn't understand religion. I didn't know what the church was. I didn't know really any religion. My whole life was fear. My life was fear. I didn't know um, the birth story. I didn't know resurrection stories. I didn't know Noah um, and the ark. I didn't know these Bible stories that children now know. Before I was a Christian, I thought God was um, pretty much non-existent. Unreal. I thought he was just some mystical being that people talked about and I didn't understand who he was. And then other times they felt he was an angry and mean God. God was too contradictory to what science said. Being a believer in science, I never really took the time though to look into the validity of Jesus Christ as a living God and the historical accuracy of the Gospels. Jesus was another false god just like all the other gods like Greek mythology and stuff like that and there's just a book describing him and like making a fake life for him and stuff like that. I always believed in God um, but I just thought that he didn't really care about what was going on in our lives like it was just more of a he created us he put us here and then like that was it. I never knew the Bible. I had to go buy one. I didn't even have one. I don't think that I was living my life in a way that is, um, like, that was pleasing to God. You know, I mean, I wasn't the best person. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It's like I did. I go, I went 180 degrees in the other direction. It's like I partied. I was promiscuous, you know. I mean, all the things that you shouldn't have done, I was doing them. And I didn't care. I was following career, money, fame, fortune, all of the above. How I ended up at Good News Church is, first it was strictly just to listen to my granddaughter play. I had no intention whatsoever of making this my church. <laughs> my wife brought me here. Because of my wife. Going to school with someone who went here. And she invited me one day and I was just like, sure, I'm going to go see how this is. And I ended up really liking it. Uh, Brenda was the first person who told me about Good News Church. and. I told her, I don't know church. I need Veggie Tales Church. About eight years ago, I had one of the worst days of my life in that our youngest son passed away on December 3rd in 2014. My oldest son, Matt, was coming here to Good News and had met Pastor Mario and about a month after that, Matt was baptized here at Good News Church and invited us to come and be a part of that. The way I came to believe in Jesus was by first attending Good News Church. My true buy-in started four years ago. Something happened in me and I realized that I was completely going down the wrong path and I was believing in the wrong things and realized that 
Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit were what I needed in my life at the time. Like I was just tired of living in sin and being jealous and having all these negative feelings and I wanted to do something more. His grace is more powerful than anything and when you believe that, when I started to believe that, it made all the difference for me. Two years ago at that point, uh, when I just stopped being so prideful, um, was probably the point like that I actually became a Christian. Yeah, everything's been better since then. What changed was my exposure to who God really is and what Jesus died for so that I could have a personal relationship with him. I spent several months looking into the validity of Jesus Christ as a person. Um, the biggest piece of evidence I found was actually the speed in which Christianity spread through the region. There was one other question remaining, and that was a very important one for me, and one that I spent even more time going over in my head, and that was, was he a liar, lunatic, or Lord? And I prayed on that question for a long time to God. And one morning, while we were preparing in church for Lord's Supper, I just had this overwhelming urge to ask for forgiveness for my unbelief in Christ. And for the first time that morning, I took the Lord's Supper as a believer of Jesus Christ and accepted him as my Lord and Savior. But then on November 8th, 2019, our 18-year-old son was killed in a car accident. And my life shattered into a million pieces. And I honestly didn't think there was any way I could ever come back from that. The way I came to Jesus was through a miracle of um, something radically just happened to me. And later it was explained that I was baptized by the Holy Spirit. And I had this eagerness to learn what was happening. Why is this happening? I came to Good News Church because my coworker, Jeremy Richards, after my son died, asked me if I wanted to meet with him on our lunch break to talk about God. And I agreed. And after talking to him, he invited me to Good News Church. And my family and I decided to go and we fell in love and we never left after that. I still struggled at this point a great deal with believing. Um, I had so many unanswered questions like, how did life begin? How did the universe begin? I realized after a little while that even if I didn't believe in God, those questions still existed. They weren't answered. I had someone lay hands on me and pray over me, and it was an out of this world experience. I almost thought I was going crazy because I didn't believe um, that miracles could happen. Jesus saved me from the indescribable pain that I thought would never go away in my life. The way I came to believe in Jesus uh, was in 2016, I was pregnant with my son and I had turned to the Women's Pregnancy Center because I had adoption in mind. And a friend there, uh, she wasn't a friend at the time, but she is now, Barb, um, we had a lot of conversations throughout my pregnancy and there was one day that she invited me over to her house and we talked for about three hours and she told me about Jesus and who he was, who he is and what he did. I had confessed to her that I had like this deep like shame because I had two abortions and I never told anybody. Um, she told me about a post-abortion study class that they had at the Women's Pregnancy Center. Um, she invited me to Good News Church I thought, am I supposed to do something special? Is there something magical that's supposed to happen? Um, so, you know, looking back, especially that whole weekend, just kind of meditating on his word, um, that's when I realized that that's when it happened. I was uh, really deep into like the sin of sexual immorality at the time. And through like saving me from that, he redeemed a lot of my friendships and relationships with people over time teaching me how to have like healthy 
and not toxic relationships with friends and other people. The pain was so bad that if I jumped, it all goes away. You asked me, could I imagine myself doing that today? And the answer today is no, because my whole mind has shifted from focus on me to how do we impact other people? By getting into the Word and getting into Bible studies and having a better understanding of the Bible, it really helped me to kind of understand where I kind of fit into God's plan. And God's plan for me isn't to hurt me, it is to help me. And so that's where the things have changed from before when I was spiritual to now when I'm a Christian and following Jesus. If someone said to me 15 years ago, 10 years ago, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you go up and pray with them, I'd say, keep your thousand. It ain't happening, baby, it ain't happening. But now it's like, I want people to know. Today I have employees coming up to me and asking me to pray with them. Five years ago, that never would have been even something I would remotely have done. It's the priorities have shifted because my approach to life has shifted. So I just started praying more and more and more um, that God would use me in a way that he found pleasing. And then literally everything in my life got better. Number one, I find that I'm happier. It's, I have a lot more patience than I used to have. I don't do the nasty things I did. I, I mean, I was a partying fool. One of my favorite things about the gospel is my shortcomings are no longer defining me. I'm not defined by my past. I'm defined by my Savior. Jesus saved me from all my sin, and I finally I can now tell that I'm not going to go to hell, and I'm going to go to heaven. He made me uh, the daughter of the one true king. I don't live for work. I'm a, a million times better dad. I'm wearing a new pair of glasses now. I see, I see everything through what am I called to do as a Christian? How am, I, how am I called to act and live my life? I got baptized because, well, I wanted to tell everybody around me that I'm one of them and they're now my brothers and sisters. Finding Good News Church or being introduced to Good News Church was a blessing. It took Bartow reaching out to me to make me feel like I was a part of something. Through this time, which has been several years, there's been many talks with people here in their homes at their dinner table. We can't even track the hours that they've spent answering my questions and never judging me, never condemning me, never looking down on me. They always did so with patience and kindness and love. And that was one thing that made it feel so welcoming here at Good News. I didn't grow up with a lot of love and I just felt very loved and welcomed in the church. Listening to the music uh, that Kenan would lead us in, um, I realized that God was slowly healing my heart. In kids zone you get to learn all the like just a simple version of all of the like Bible stories. I'm in an accountability group with uh, four other men that if I come up on something I'm struggling with, I've got guys I can talk to. The members of my community group, you know, there's a bunch of guys and we do things together and, and we have like minds and, you know, they have helped me and shown me what, again, a righteous man should look like and can look like. I got very close. I think I attached to Joy and Terry because they just seem never to judge me. The biggest influences in my life has been Kelly Roberts, the DeHart family, and Mario and his family. Brenda was the first person who told me about Good News Church, and I am very thankful for that. The first one would be Barb, because she brought me here. Um, Heidi Valella would also be another one. <laughs> There's so many um, Lance Powers because, you know, he brought me to the community group. Jeremy Richards was the number one person that started this ball rolling for me at this church. And then his wife, Amanda, 
um, also helped with discipleship with me as well, which has been a big factor in my believing in God and Jesus. Miss Heidi, the Davidson family. My wife, number one, D. Hyatt, Ian Burns. Ashley and Tony Herrera. Barto McDonald. People who've been here for a long time, I'll, well, I'd like to say thank you for helping me. If you're new at Good News Church, get engaged. You only get out of it what you put into it. If you're a kid, you should, um, like actually, it is really good if you actually pay attention in class because it actually helps you in the, when you're a Christian. I would say it's very important not to become complacent and underestimate the difference that Jesus can make in someone's life. Even this very church can make in someone's life. It saved mine, and there are plenty of other lives that need saving.